Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 186 of your favourite Formula 1 show. Yes, Jamie and I return this time out to preview the Belgian Grand Prix. Of course, if you missed out on the podcast uh, that went live earlier on in the week where we spoke about what was just a very chaotic uh, Hungarian Grand Prix, go back uh, and check it out. But Jamie, it's the final race before the summer break. It kind of felt like it was a slow start to the year. But race is recently becoming thick and fast, and now after this weekend, we've got to try and survive a month without them. Yes, and there'll be a lot of talk in the summer break, I'm sure, about many things. And it feels awful that Belgium is before the break, because we're so used to having Belgium be the first race back. Ever since I can remember, really, Belgium has always been the race to bring you back. So it feels a bit odd to just be going straight to Zandvoort afterwards. And not even, in, like, they split up Belgium and Monza so much now. It's very sad. I th- I think every time we get back round to the Belgian Grand Prix, we make exactly this rant every single yeah, season. Probably. <laughs> we we like traditional Formula One. We want a six race calendar. Monaco is the only street circuit. <laughs> only glorious. points for the top six. That would be only great. Only <laughs> points for the top six. And everybody who gets within one second of the fastest lap gets a split of the point yes, for it. Yes, exactly. Good times. Good times were bring had back, back in Arbus the old Ring. days of Formula 1. <laughs> bring, bring back Arvers, dearie <laughs> me. That would be quite... I mean, at least we then get a German Grand Prix, which would be nice. Yeah, um, exactly. But, I mean, yeah, obviously, it's only been a couple of days since that last podcast went out, but we have bizarrely got quite a few things to talk about. Now, ultimately, this podcast is normally cursed when it comes to news dropping. <laughs> We said last week, obviously, or in the last episode, that Ocon was probably going to be announced by now. Hasn't happened yet, which I guess is a good point. Uh, But I don't think either of us had on our bingo card, did we, that Mattia Bonotto was suddenly going to be spread all over our Twitter, or X, or whatever we're calling it, timelines yesterday. uh, Because he's made the move to Audi, seemingly out of nowhere. Yeah, as COO and CTO, which is very... It's a lot of like letters. Boss. Yeah, it's a lot of letters. And I don't mind it. Obviously, I have a a, a major investment in Audi. Not money-wise, just because Hulkenberg's trying for the next season. <laughs> I was going to say, so, you've got stock in Audi. <laughs> I've got millions of pounds in Audi, yeah. So, And I don't think it's a bad That wouldn't even be a major move. investment. No, yeah, no it's, think, it's a bit of an odd one. I don't mind it. And obviously, they've, they've sacked Andreas Seidel, who everyone hypes up all the time which I think is probably fair. When he was at McLaren, he was doing very well. But this Sauer project for him hasn't really gone anywhere. And it really, yeah, it's it's been pretty poor all round. And at the end of the day, you look at the leadership for that. And him and Hoffman, I can't remember his first name, um, both of them are really high up in, in Sauber. And they've both gone because Sauber have been awful for the last... We were looking at some data before the show. They scored more points in the first half of 2022 when they had a car down to the weight limit than they have in the four and a half seasons around that since 2020. Since this turn of the decade and we're almost (laughs) halfway through it. Yeah, it's... I mean, I think we always knew... We'd always said anyway that Sauber this year was just going to be sacrifice, wasn't it? You know, and Mm. ultimately, as much as Hulkenberg's not going to admit it, I think he's pretty much of the idea that next year is just a complete write-off. Which, to be fair, you know, we've been seeing he's been delivering so well with that Haas team. It's absolutely a gamble at this stage of his career that he can afford to go with. Because, you know, it's not that he's got world championships and things like that. You know, it's just to try and get that big break with a big team that has never really fallen into place for him. But... It always seemed a bit odd. I remember originally when, obviously, when we kind of saw this kick buy out and obviously Alfa Romeo leaving Sauber and all this, that and the other. And then they kind of said that there was no team principal. It was just going to be like two guys that we never heard of before, kind of in charge of separate parts of the team. And you're going, well, this isn't very normal. And there's a reason Mm. why every other team up and down the grid (laughs) does it one way. And it just has not worked, has it? No, no, not at all. And they have been going backwards like even within this season they've been going backwards but across the course of three or four years really since yeah they started well this rule cycle it's just been going backwards and backwards and yeah they are an independent team they don't have the most amazing facilities in the world but they're definitely 
they own more assets than the likes of Haas and uh, Williams, I would say, in terms of how good their factory is. So at the very least, they should be on comparable levels to those kinds of teams. And they just aren't. They're, they are the back marker by a long way this season. And I would be surprised if they sneak more than one point somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, I well, this I mean, we asked this question very early on in the year, didn't I? And I know you were adamant they would. <laughs> would you still say now you think there's going to be a point opportunity at some point this year for them? I think so. They've been close enough on a couple of occasions that, like, they'll, there hasn't really been a crazy race full of DNFs yet this season, as far as I can remember. No, not really. So, That's what I was trying when we to get think that, about. well, I, I was you trying know, to Bottas, think back. Carry Bottas on, is fairly regularly finishing about 14th, 13th, 14th. Obviously, Joe finished 11th in Bahrain and 9th in the China Spring. <laughs> Never forget. So there you go. P20 on count back. We take those. <laughs> Boy. So, yeah. I, I think they'll they'll sneak a point between them somewhere. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't, I, I'm trying to think because, obviously, last year, one of the craziest races ended up being Zandvoort, wasn't it? Mm. And obviously, that wasn't a particularly great one for Salva because obviously both cars flew off the road yeah. at turn one. Uh, Bottas was able to keep it going though because he's much more talented. Um, <laughs> I mean, you, you you say they're like the true backmarker. I think that's still a bit harsh. Let's not forget, obviously, Bottas last weekend qualified twelfth. You know, it's it, true. they've they've yeah. got a car on a track that suits them, a car that can absolutely fight with the other backmarker teams. Um, but it's still, you know, it's a, it, 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 all the feedback we ever sort of seem to find out about them is it's a tricky car to drive. You know, it's not mm. very forgiving. It's not very confidence inspiring either. It's just a bit difficult. And when they get it right one weekend, it's there or thereabouts. When they get it wrong, and probably still the best example of that was Monaco, wasn't it? Well, yeah. I think they, they were pretty much as far off everybody else as the rest of the grid was it was just a complete yeah. <laughs> write off yeah. of a weekend for them and that was probably the low light of this year. Um Yeah, totally. But obviously going back to obviously Mattia Bonotto, let's not forget Jamie, he is Swiss born. Is he? he, I didn't is, know he, that. he was he was born in Switzerland, so the there Swiss are reuniting. They're gonna put up all the defences around the country and they're gonna build you know a Formula One team, despite having a German manufacturer next year. I quite like Mattia Bonotto. And I don't think he's as bad as people make out. He's very heavily memed just because of how much 2022 fell apart for Ferrari. But, like, he got them to the point of challenging Red Bull within a few years, which is pretty good going. Like, he jumped Mercedes by a mile in the well, time where he was team principal. Let's not so, forget as well, because obviously his um, area of tech, of kind of... Um, Trying to think that not I'm trying to think of the right word technical expertise. kind of skill exp, that's the one expertise I was trying to work out. Of course, he's he's got a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering, and let's not forget he probably still um, was in control of the team that probably maybe produced the most powerful engine that we've seen <laughs> in this turbo hybrid era. Maybe Lewis is at the end of 2021. Whether had a good run the for it as well. Ferrari engine was legal or not. <laughs> oh, well, it wasn't. We know that. But you've got to think. Obviously, he was able to do that pretty quickly with that team. Audi's coming in trying to build new engines for 2026. There's got to be a decent level of understanding there for mm. him. You know, that might really play into their hand. Because, of course, all the talk is about how this new era is going to be more about the engines again. And you know, like we saw in the second half of 2019, no, it certainly wasn't. It certainly wasn't legal. I think no one can really <laughs> argue against that. Um, but it did make a huge difference. They completely turned their fortunes around. We don't talk about yeah. 2020. They were qualifying one two every week, pretty much in 2019. Everywhere, everywhere. But it was so so illegal that they were basically punished with a year of being awful. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Which makes us laugh as non Sebastian Vettel fans that that was his last year in Ferrari. But, um. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you've you got to think as well, of course, you know, it's a very, very different team to manage, I'm sure, when or you've smaller. got. No, I, did, I wasn't actually going to say smaller. I was thinking more when Audi come in oh, okay. about <laughs> a factory team than a customer team. You know, you've got to manage everything now you know you've got an engine department obviously you've got to you know work out 
you know, distributions, things like that as well. Although no one at the moment, I think, is using AMD Power, are they? When the new regs come in, nothing's been confirmed or anything. No. Um, but obviously he has experience with that side of things as well, you know, trying to go to a board and, you know, getting more funds or being able to do this or being able to do that as well. And I think the good thing as well for him specifically is he's not come from the Sauber side. He's not come from the Audi side. He yeah. can kind of come in as a neutral down the middle and really kind of go, I think this is the right thing. And people can mm. go, oh, well, he's siding with the board. Oh, he's siding with people working at the Sauber factory. He can just come in and be quite objective with, I think this is the right way to go with this car or this upgrade and go from there. And it's also quite funny that obviously now effectively him and Fred Vasseur have swapped. That is true. <laughs> They're going to be rivals back in a couple, well, next season. Well, maybe not next season, the season after probably. Next season? How, <laughs> how badly a Ferrari, Ferrari throw away off next year? <laughs> oh, dear me. Yeah, but I don't hate it. Seems seems good for direction, at least, because Salva are really rudderless at the minute. But yeah, we will switch it up to a different back marker. Um and start talking about Sergio. But no, we're talking about Alpine. <laughs> and yeah, they've got a livery um, for this weekend in Belgium, which is pretty good. It's it doesn't look like an Alpine in the slightest. It's red and black. <laughs> it's a and fantastic it's, livery. It is. It really is, and it's based on Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool movie and Wolverine movies that are dropping on Thursday today, as we record this. Um, Will you, you be go watching them? them? No. <laughs> <laughs> we we did we did discuss this beforehand because obviously you know I think we're both aware what was it Deadpool is it called yes I'm aware we're sounding really old right now as well um, but we we kind of discussed this pre-show neither Jamie or I could tell you anything about Marvel <laughs> we just have yeah, no beyond idea a few films that's I it. couldn't even go but... that far I don't think <laughs> uh, I, all I, I know just... about Ryan Reynolds is that he owns Wrexham Football Club that's yeah that's, that's basically what I could tell you. Um, so just completely left field, Jamie. I've gone down a bit of a rabbit hole because oh, no. uh, obviously I was looking at Mattia Bonotto. Um, oh, I, then it, obviously the next thing that came up was Maurizio Riva Bene. Do you know what he's been up to? <sighs> Probably smoking a lot of cigarettes in Italy. No, he got uh, a two-year ban from football uh, into financial. Oh, fraud I did see with that. Juventus. <laughs> it was I did quite see a while that. ago yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> so that, no, all the Juve to. board just got kicked out. <laughs> So bizarre. The Italians are always up to no good. <laughs> there we go. That's all of our four Italians. All of the Italians immediately gone. switching off. Ciao. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, that, that, that Alpine livery looks pretty good. There's been other news with Alpine this week, hasn't there, Jamie? There has been. Because they're meant to be it's strapping their engine program, again. <laughs> and they apparently want to become a Mercedes customer team, which would mean that they've got McLaren, Williams, currently Aston Martin, although they're going to go... And then Alpine, so half the grid would be back to Mercedes power, which I think would be like Formula One in 1975, which is a very obscure one. And I'll just 2016, this. right? 2016, yeah, but I guess you had the extra team on the grid with Manor, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, the 1975 British Grand Prix, everybody had a Ford power unit apart from Ferrari, and there were 28 yeah. cars there. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I, there was a, a press release, I don't know if you saw it, from Pierre Schutti, uh, who's Alpine's former legal manager, who has basically released a paragraph, an essay worth of uh, of people saying that Alpine are making a massive error. He's absolutely lambasting them, especially the leadership of Luca De Meo and Laurent Rossi. He's absolutely hating on, um, calling them... Numerous ethical concerns questioned the direction we were heading. No one seemed to care. Looking back, I regret not taking more action. Uh, the scrutiny to the mismanagement and possibly prevented some of those missteps. Although I'm cynical enough to believe that no one would have really cared. The only, only positive would have been on my ego. <laughs> Seriously, Pierre, I, Pierre I, I love a good French spat. <laughs> it's so fun to watch. Honestly, watching Alpine over the last three years has been. I'd argue just been... since 2006. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> has been right who's falling out now and what's exploding so yeah this is the latest thing the alpine did most recently like the engine they used most recently that wasn't a renault power unit was the mercedes power unit back in 2015 2015 so yeah i don't think it's a bad move but it's just 
is the very factory going to close then if that's if that's what they do at this point I mean, you surely should... you'd repurpose it if yeah, you're a, if you're a company for, like for that. something else but yeah, but yeah you yeah. you think the endstone team maybe they're on the way out sell them to andretti <laughs> i'm just thinking then you obviously mentioned that about the last <laughs> time obviously they used um Oh, no, obviously you still had Red Bull using Renault power units, didn't you? I was like, what yeah. happened to Renault then during 2015? But obviously, yeah. Because Toro Rosso also used a year-old Renault. Or was that a year-old Ferrari at that point? They they switched back and forth a few times. <coughs> yeah, a bit odd, a bit odd. Yeah, very uh, odd. Let's have a look. 2015, yeah, uh, Toro Rosso were using... No, they were using the 2015... Uh, Renault Reno. power unit as well, yeah. Okay, and then the year after they they switched to a 2015 Ferrari, which is why they were faster than Red Probably. Bull at the start. <laughs> they were, yeah, yeah, because they did, didn't they? They used the, no, they were using. They were using a year old Ferrari, yeah, definitely. According to this, it was a two year old Ferrari engine, but I don't believe that. No, it was just an, it was just an iteration update for 2015, 2016. Yeah, so Renault oh. are falling apart again. Who could have seen that coming? Um, yeah, Gasly is yet to finish. And he like he's, he didn't start Silverstone. He DNF'd from the back of the grid in Hungary mechanically. So they probably just sponsored him by Ryan Reynolds so that Gazzy's got something to watch when he retires. Exactly. Yeah. Give it. Well, I'd say I don't. I don't know how long a Deadpool movie is, but I'm sure there'll be enough time to watch most of it whilst all the other drivers probably do the race. Shorter than in 2021 Belgian Grand Prix. That's for sure. Probably. Yeah. Um... I mean, let's talk about it, Jamie. We've spoke about it so many times, haven't we? Uh, what's going on with Sergio Perez this week? Is he out of a drive? Is Ricardo out of a drive as well? He's got one more round to prove himself. It's not going to yes. happen, is it? He's in trouble. Well, there's more like going on at Red Bull than, than meets the eye, obviously, as there always is. But Max Verstappen has, has grid pens this weekend. That's, that's a bit of news. So he's going to be starting at the very best, P11. Um... So yeah, that gives Perez an opportunity to be like, right, let's start ahead of Max, let's beat Max, and then I'm going to keep my seat forever. Will that happen? No, it probably won't happen. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he actually did have a very good Hungarian Grand Prix weekend, if you ignore the fact he crashed in Q1. Cause yeah, the Friday race was actually great. was one of his best so yeah. far this year. And all the murmurs out of Red Bull have been, they were very pleased with his race pace, because he beat George Russell from a worse starting position, which is quite good going. No, he was ahead recently. of Russell, wasn't he? Oh, he was I ahead of Russell. I thought Paris was 16th, yeah. They Russell basically just jumped followed each other. Ah, oh, right, okay. And then he had to get back ahead of Russell on pure pace. So his pace and clear out was actually very good at Hungary. So if he can keep that up, like I think if he has another positive weekend where he doesn't... I mean, it's hard to call Hungary positive when he still did qualify 17th or 16th, sorry. But um, yeah, if he just has a normal weekend where he qualifies within that top seven, because Max obviously won't be there, and finishes at least ahead of eighth, as in he beats one of the other top running teams, then maybe they keep him for a bit longer, but it seems like the writing's on the wall, to be honest. So, yeah. Interestingly, murmurs out of uh, whatever they're called, b Carbon, what's called Alf Tauri, that's not the case. Um, Daniel Ricciardo basically has been told this is... You've got, like, he was told, I think, before Silverstone that you've got these three races to prove yourself. And that was all he was told. It wasn't, like, prove yourself why you should stay in RB or why you should earn that seat off Perez. It was just prove yourself. So he's in a bit of uncertainty um, well, as this, well. This is, this is the bizarre thing, though, with the way the Red Bull program is right now, is that Ricardo could genuinely end up with one of the best seats on the grid or no seat at all within two weeks and you just don't know which way it's going to go yeah yeah I mean yeah do you I think Paris still, should be dropped I'm with the mindset at the moment now he's clearly you know they're, they're probably going to lose the Constructors Championship this year is the way I feel about it at the moment I would but let's be fair at the end of the day now because of the budget cap is a constructor's title that important for a team like Red Bull when you know you're going to get the funding anyway? Yes, obviously it's nice to win, and I understand that. And you know it's the whole point of the competition. 
But in, from purely a financial standpoint, you know, it's the same as if Ferrari don't, well, they never win it, but, you know, it's, it doesn't matter. <laughs> You're still going to be able to spend the most amount of money. If anything, yeah. it's probably beneficial for them because they get more wind tunnel time. Um, but Maybe, yeah. I would, if it was me right now and if I was in charge of Red Bull, I would be lobbing Ricardo in there and putting Lawson and Sonoda against each other in the V-car and basically saying if Ricardo can stay close enough to Max, he keeps it. If he can't, then you know which one of those two is going to be better ready for next year. Or you give Yuki a run at it. I don't know. But that, that would yeah. be what I'd do. Give Ricardo the seat and basically use it as a test run for Yuki versus Liam. Perez can go enjoy a summer holiday. Um, He'll be driving yeah. for Alpine next season or Haas or something. Probably not Haas if they've signed Ocon. But yeah, Perez could get enough at Audi. Bring back the 2014 Force India. That would be great. Wow, that would be a lineup and a half, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be. Line up from ten years ago it would have been quite good. But <laughs> the uh yeah, I think it would be amazing if they just chuck Liam Lawson in the Red Bull, to be honest. Oh, they shouldn't um, though. But that's it's an op- such that's a an option. stupid idea. I think he would do quite well, to be honest. Um he obviously wouldn't beat Max, but I don't think he'd do any worse than Perez is doing. And You'd have to give it you know, to him on the proviso that it doesn't impact his opportunities next year. You know, so yeah. it's not that you have to deliver in this car, otherwise you're not getting the V card next year. But even then, yeah, you're well, like, why would you put in a rookie instead well, of putting in a driver? Yeah, As so in, love Ricardo in there and give him a chance to yeah. build up at RB. If Lawson doesn't have a seat by September, he gets to quit. Basically, he's a free agent, so anyone can sign him. And it sounds like people would be interested in signing him. So, oh, they sniffed around, didn't they? Yeah, they did. And they, yeah, Red Bull basically like, if we don't give him a seat, we've lost him. And do they, like, maybe they don't care because he could be middling, but he's still 21, 22. And yeah, he did yeah. very creditably at, uh, at VCarb or whatever the Minardi is called these days, last season. So... But let's be fair, sensibly, as a junior, as a rookie driver, he did absolutely well enough to keep that seat. Yeah, I still want to know what Daniel Ricciardo, what information he has on Christian Horner that is allowing him to maintain this drive. Horner just loves As, it. That's the thing. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I get that. Like, and don't get me wrong, Ricciardo is obviously a very likable character, and that does go a long way in Formula One. But he's also how old is he? Like thirty four, thirty five. Yeah. In a junior team, <laughs> like. Exactly. It's not gonna. It's exactly. not gonna get. It's, you know, he's not gonna fight for world titles or anything like that anymore. Unless something crazy happens. You know, unless he ends up with like a button two thousand nine year or something. It's just not gonna happen. And at some point, you've got I'm to just accept still, uh, that. Slightly upset that, for the second time in his career, Hulkenberg has accidentally missed out on the best team in the grid because he signed a bit early for a team on the up, <laughs> which is slightly irritating. What's that? Sorry. Uh, like in twenty sixteen. When Rosberg retired, Hulkenberg had already signed for Renault, despite being yes. the first choice yeah, yeah. for Rosberg and for Nicky Lauda when Rosberg left. And then this time round, if he hadn't signed for Audi and was just a Haas driver looking for a seat, I am positive that he would be in that Red Bull by by Monza or by Zandvoort. Sorry. Fair enough. I mean, maybe if they threw enough money at Haas, he could be still be bought out if they wanted him that badly. Only I don't for know six why, months, we- wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, I don't know why when you've got... Uh, yeah, Red Bull have got the money that if it came to it, they could buy him out of any contract they wanted. I guess so. You know, it wouldn't so. be he's a problem. He's pals with Verstappen, he's quick, he needs a podium. Is he pals no, with no, Verstappen? No. I don't think I've ever seen yeah. him talk. No, he gave Verstappen a slipstream to get him in a pole, didn't he? Oh, wow, they're best mates. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, oh, exactly. Man. Oh, man. I mean, let's, let's talk quickly. You, you've segued there nicely. Uh, Max Verstappen is now banned from sim racing. Late yes. night sim racing during Grand Prix weekends. Despite his probably best performance of the season in Imola. Was it was... I, th- I think this is really odd that this is described as his best performance of the year. Because the only reason it got so close in the end was because he spent a lot of the early race bottling it slightly. He then just had to be... Like, don't get me wrong. Yes, the defensive drive at the end was very good. But it was mainly just because, again, yeah, he made so many track limit infringements inside the first 15 laps. That he had well, to be maybe careful. if he hadn't been up all night gaming, then he would have been okay, wouldn't he? Well, exactly. <laughs> and what I love most about <laughs> sound like crafty. Well, yeah, but well, this is what I don't get. Like, people go, oh, well, it's crafty. You know, if he was British, he would be saying how good it was to leave sim racing. You go, in, I don't think crafty would. I think he's just an old man that doesn't understand. Yeah. And, like, I understand that people do moan 
about the British bias and that kind of thing. And I understand, obviously, it's frustrating on the world feed and things like that. But ultimately, it's a British media company that's trying to get British people to pay insane of amounts money. of money to and watch it. And have you ever heard the clips of Dutch media? Oh, exactly. And how Dutch are ten are. times worse, I'd argue. <laughs> but obviously, they're not the world feed, and I do understand that. Yeah. You know, I, I think they probably do need an Alex Jakes on the world feed or something like that. And as painful as it might be to say, maybe a Will Buxton. Because I'd argue they probably can be a bit more neutral. Jolie and Palmer. Jolie and Palmer would be perfect. He'd be perfect back in that Alpine car as well. Um, <laughs> but yeah. His career's not done yet, is it? No, exactly. And to be fair, he's had a pretty successful career once he's yeah, he out of the car. I would it love makes to me have laugh Palmer so much. on the show. He's great. Julian Palmer is a baller, and I, and Julian, if you want to come You're on, a day I'm one an fan. I, I have been a day one fan of Julian Palmer. I love the guy. I love the guy. Um, shall we do your quiz, Jamie? Yes, I'm worried about this. Oh, you shouldn't be too worried. It's a pretty easy one today. So, Jamie one eight three, Belgian Grand Prix. What is yes. the best Belgian Grand Prix of all time? 1998. That wasn't the one I was going to say. That's a shame. Add 10 years to it. 2009? <laughs> oh, yeah, Physical Keller, Keller won, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> well, he didn't win, sorry. Raikkonen won. Uh, 08. Yes, thank you. We got there in the okay. end. You have got one minute to name me every driver that scored a point in that Grand Prix, but if you get one wrong, it's Ooh. over. Okay. Okay. I Your think time. I can do this. I know you should be well. able to do this. We both know this race quite well. I, this, honestly, I reckon is one of the most underrated races of when I see people on Twitter going, I want to get my friend into Formula 1. What race should oh, I show this, them? Yeah. This one should be up there, but should it's not talked about enough. And 2010 Belgium should be up there too. That was a great 2010, race. Exactly. Bel- Belgium delivered so many great races and now it's just been a stinker for the last few years. <laughs> they're too scared of racing in right. the rain. Start the clock. Three, two, one, Go. Right, Felipe Massa won. Correct. From Nick Heidfeld. Correct. From Lewis Hamilton. Correct. Penalty, the, the absolute cheat, by the way. Oh, yeah, there you go. Um, yeah. Fourth was Fernando Alonso. Correct. I think fifth was Seb Vettel. Correct. Now, Bourdais was seventh. Correct. And I just can't remember who was sixth or eighth. So... I will say it definitely wasn't Raikkonen because he crashed. Uh, Bottle job. It could be Kovalainen, but I'm not locking that in yet. You got could, I, I'll go. No, hmm, Robert Kubica seems like it might be a wrong answer as well. Ten seconds. <sighs> Who else was all right that season? I'll go Kubica. Correct. Seven out and... of eight. You got one more. Three, and one, Rosberg. time is up. No, annoyingly, oh. no, you're wrong anyway. <laughs> Who was the last one? Uh, so, first of all, uh, Heike Cove line in the course, his gearbox broke down at pretty much the exact same second that Hamilton uh, crossed the line, which is quite impressive. Oh, I impressive. didn't know that. That is impressive. Yeah, he, he broke down literally on the last lap, gearbox failure. Um, the last driver until the top ten, I'm not surprised you don't remember it, because <laughs> by the looks of it, it was the loneliest race in the world. <laughs> Right. <laughs> it, it was Mark Webber. Uh, I can't do an Mark Australian Webber. accent like you can. Not bad. Um, two driver. He was 26 seconds behind Bourdais in front uh, and 25 <laughs> seconds ahead of Timo Glock behind. Wow. So it was a pretty lonely end impressive. to an afternoon. Was he driving? He was Red, Red Bull by then, wasn't he? He was Red Bull then, yeah. Lost Seven out of eight, though, was good going. He did, yeah. I mean, Sebastian Bourdais, we've spoken about this many times before. Uh, but the <laughs> fact that he was, with a lap he was to go. <laughs> He was seventh, less than three seconds, two seconds, sorry, three seconds, yeah, but no, it was two seconds, I can't do maths, two seconds behind Alonso in fourth, and would have had a podium heading into that final lap, absolutely heartbreaking, and of course yeah. then everyone remembers the weekend after as well. Even at Bordeaux, that, that, qualified fourth. That Toro Rosso was such a good car. In the wet, yeah, to, especially. Like people don't, especially in the wet, people don't talk about it enough. They go, oh, Seb, it was such a miracle. They go, no, hang on a minute. That car was genuinely by that Probably point of the Probably the third year, fastest. Uh, it was on par with BMW Sauber towards yeah. the end of the year. It was mad, the car they built. It was close to Renault. That season actually great. I might go rewatch it. <laughs> oh, we, uh, genuinely, we've said this before. If we could do classic podcasts, 2008 would be such a season to go back through. 
So it's so fun. Mm, not not quite as fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, you did well there. Seven out of eight. I'm impressed. Thank you. Shall we get on with our predictions? Are we missing anything? I think we've gone through all the notes we wanted to, haven't we? Yeah, I think we've done everything apart from that. Wonderful. What are the first. scores on the doors still? You are two ahead of me. Okay. That's so, good. yes, it's currently and 50 to 48. Just to clarify as well, because obviously Verstappen's got great ah, pens. Ocon announced he's going to Haas five minutes ago. Oh, wonderful. There we there go. We, we talk didn't about miss that. the news for once. We no didn't way. miss news. It's hot off the press. Ocon announced it because we're live. It is glorious. Ocon confirmed to Haas. Jamie, we already knew it was going to happen. Um, yeah, we did. Ayo Komatsu was his first ever race engineer. Who knew? And it's the first ever Grand Prix winner to race for Haas. Really? I guess so, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's the luckiest Grand Prix winner of all time. He's up there. <coughs> up there, yeah. I wouldn't say he's the luckiest. No, probably um, not the luckiest. But... Yes. Uh, uh, so, so he's that's on a one multi-year more seat deal. Off. Doesn't say how many, though. There we go. Um, yeah, I, I'm trying to read through just quickly, just kind of skimming not, through. Not it much going on. Yeah, doesn't say. It's pretty yeah, much hey, as expected. Exactly. It's not a. It, considering obviously we've been hyping this up, it's pretty much as we expected. Jamie, are you predicting an Esteban Ocon win this weekend to celebrate his no. announcement? <laughs> um, and we're we're taking pole position as the driver who, who starts, starts the race from, from P1. Yeah. Right, so you can't predict for staff where well, you could. But well, you, you could if, if you theoretically <coughs> think 10 other cars are going to get penalties. I guess, yeah. Um, so I will say pole position will go <laughs> to George Russell again. <laughs> okay, interesting. I mean, it's meant to rain Saturday, isn't it? It is, yeah, supposedly, and he qualified second in a Williams, so why not? And he also, the last time it rained in qualifying, took pole at another high speed, high downfall circuit. Exactly, exactly. There is madness in my method. Uh, that's not the saying, is it? But it's not. First place will be Lando Norris. Okay. Second place will be George Russell. Okay. And third place will be Max Verstappen. Interesting. British one two, eh? Yeah, we're going for it again. Well, when was the last time Brits got a one two? Uh, Brazil, 22, Brazil 22, surely. Brazil 22. Yeah. Or no, did who came second to Russell in Austria? That was science, wasn't it? It was science, yeah. yeah. Uh, Mercedes, I don't think about a double podium this year, have they? They have had podiums in like, the last four Grand Prix after not getting one all year, but haven't yeah, had a double podium a double yet, yet. Which is quite And impressive. you're going to predict Checo Perez on pole, so I heard. I'm not predicting that at all. Where <laughs> did you hear that? <laughs> I'm going to say pole position. He's going to rewrite the wrongs of 2021. It's going to be Lando Norris. I'm going to say P1. It's going to be Lando Norris. Can't believe I'm saying this. Disgusting. Um, P2 is going to be... Lewis Hamilton. Another British one too in the predictions. Yeah, P three. I'm gonna say Oscar Piastri. Okay. I was gonna say I'm typing in the predictions. I've already written Piastri in third because I knew you were yep. gonna predict it. I keep predicting P three. <laughs> sometimes it happens. Sometimes it doesn't. I'm hoping I can just get some points for him. Double slam podium. Title's really on. It is. It's heating up. I reckon Verstappen will probably end up like fourth or fifth. Yeah, he'll make his way through most of those. He'll beat the Ferraris, won't he? And he'll beat the Ferraris, yeah. And he'll his beat teammate. Perez. And maybe, well, they'll have to beat Russell if he finishes fourth, but still. Yeah. Uh, have we got anything else to add, Jamie? Uh, it might rain. Well, we said that already, didn't we? We so did say that. should be dry. Friday, Saturday could be wet. So have fun, everyone camping. Cause yep, enjoy that, it. That Jamie's done it before. like a mud bath. <laughs> <laughs> glorious absolutely glorious uh yes. well there we go then thank you all so much for watching if you have enjoyed please do make sure and leave like get yourself subscribed if you're new we're trying to hit a thousand subs on the channel to be greatly appreciated uh and jamie and i will return then next week to discuss the chaos 
that led to Zhou Guanyu claiming his late. first Formula One win.